everybody. This is Chris from Soul Harmony. Thank you for joining me. Today's video is going to be about Christmas. It's going to be the first of a long series of Christmassy DIYs and crafts. And today we're going to make some coasters. So these are very old coasters I have made for myself. And as you can see, they're kind of broken. These I have used uh, tiles just to make them. And because I broke some of these, I'm going to make some, but they're at least, I don't know, maybe eight or seven years old. And this one is really, really broken. I don't know if you can see it, but it's it's broken, so I'm going to do some more. I think I still have some uh, napkins. And yes, by the way, we're going to use napkins for this. So first, um, the materials you will need are some kinds of coasters. It can be any type you like. Uh, it can be tiles, it can be these type of coasters you can find sometimes at your hardware store or anywhere else. I found these here at my local place. Um, they could be also, yes, these are wood. So anything that could do the trick for coasters. Maybe not cork. I would not use cork because it's too much flexible and it doesn't get old very well. With time it's not so great. Um, so I like to use something harder, but the wood is much, I think, much better because it's lightweight and it doesn't break as easily as, as uh, tiles. So anyway, so you will need coasters, you will need uh, napkins, any type of napkins. They can be small, they can be big. These are the napkins I used here. So just to give you an example, okay, and this kind of napkin, you've got four. So depending on the size, depending on the napkin, you might have four identical designs. Sometimes it's just one big. And for this example here, it's just the same one that repeats here on both sides. So depending on the style, you can make a whole bunch. In this one, I could make six of them with no problem. And this is also a really nice idea for craft fairs. Honestly, they sell like cupcakes, whether it's for Christmas or any occasion, but they sell like cupcakes. And you can make just one, I mean, one set of six. I usually sell them by six. I think four is a little too small, um, but six is nice, and I can make six here very easily. You will need some paint. I use white. You will have to paint all, the, all of them in white first. I'll tell you why. Um, also, I use black for the back side of it. You will need some foam or anything that is going to protect your table from your coaster. Foam is really nice because it's not expensive and you can cut shapes into it. You will need also some kind of paint or it can be a paint marker. Uh, it can be gold, it can be the color of your choice to make the sides here of your coaster. I think it's nicer. Uh, here I have put some gold but it's I can't really see it. I know I don't think it's the good color. It's not this pen. It's another one, but it's not enough gold for me. Here I used uh, green paint, and you will need some hot glue or any other glue to stick your uh, your foam on the back of your coaster. And I would recommend doing this the size here a little smaller, but we'll get to this later on. And that's all. Oh yes, and you will need obviously some glue to put your napkin on your coasters. So don't go and buy anything fancy. There is decoupage glue over there, but it's usually very expensive. You can use Mod Podge and you can use also Elmer's glue, the regular one, not the one with uh, the one for kids, the school glue, because it's already really watered down. What I usually do when I give my classes is I use plain school glue, Elmer's glue, uh, not school glue, Elmer's glue, and I water it down about 50% with water. That's the good consistency because otherwise it's really thick and it's going to rip your paper apart. So use whatever you have. You don't need something really expensive and you will need a paintbrush. Okay? So first you will need to paint everything. Even if it's light color like this, I would still paint it with the white because it's not going to change the color of your napkin. Don't use any other color here. If you use yellow or gray, the yellow is going to change the colors where you're going to apply your napkin. The red is going to go a bit more orangey, the blue is going to get yellow, uh, green, and it's going to change all the colors. So white is not going to change anything and it's going to make it brighter. Don't use uh, silver or gold or gray, just white. And also, 
like here I had already done something here I didn't like if you want to cover something it's you need to use white as well I had another design here I didn't like so white is going to really erase everything and you will be able to do it again and do something over it so I've already uh, painted on mine white and it doesn't have to be perfect just white and I've already um, painted the back of it black because this is the sign that's going to be on the table and usually this is the sign that's going to be more dirty so I like to make it black and using also a black piece of foam cut it here just slightly smaller so you don't see it that much from the sides I make it a little smaller and here you don't see it but it makes a really nice professional finish to it that's what I like but if you want to do the back of it of any other color that's up to you once this is all really well dried and don't forget to do also the sides now you're going to be able to use your napkin and here I am going to use this uh, this design here because I think they're really cute these little dwarfs they're really nice I've also recently found this one here that I like too and you see there are other designs what is good with this for example is that even though you could make six very different it's going to be the same design on all your coasters let me show you there is a design here with this part you've got a Christmas tree you've got the the gnomes or the the dwarfs you could make a coaster just like this maybe I'm not gonna cut the animal and it could look like this and then you could put your all the coaster on another side of the napkin for example here and you would have the birds you would have the squirrels so you're still using the same napkin you're not losing anything or wasting anything but you're gonna have different designs on all, on all six of them and then you could go here as well so yes these kinds of napkins are very interesting because it's still the same set but it's different every time so I'm gonna make six of them I'm not gonna show you the whole six of them and again you could make six identical or six different you could have one like this one like this one with this pattern that's totally up to you what you prefer so once this is all painted what I do that's my technique sometimes people go and put glue already here I don't the first thing you need to do is separate your napkin they're usually it can be only two but the good quality one you have three layers the first layer is the printed layer and then you've got two others you have to oh, first cut it down it's easier to cut it down when you have all three layers so I'm just gonna cut it slightly and it's easier to work with a smaller piece so I'm roughly cutting it and it's easier when you have the three layers I mean we already said that then you take the two layers off carefully and now oh I've got something here okay you can layer your uh, napkin here let me put this away so I have more space to work and I don't put glue on here because sometimes if you put glue and you your napkin falls or anything it's not going to be centered you, you're not going to be able to work it well so putting glue after for me it's better so I can place it exactly where I want um, I could place it here so I can see these dwarfs a little better or elves I like it this way I need to come here And I like it this way so now that I know where I have it I'm just putting my glue on top of it and always start from the center working outside and something really important is to have some kind of brush that is really smooth really smooth really flexible so this is important because otherwise it might rip your paper apart so I'm going to zoom in here just a tiny bit or a bit more <laughs> that's it and the big issue here is that you might because napkins once they're wet they're very fragile so I don't know if you can really see it but I don't put my uh, paintbrush like this straight I put it almost flat and that's one trick I've learned because I've done a lot of paper collage like this or napkin collage and I used to rip in the beginning a lot of paper so if you don't want this to happen 
first thing really to remember is you need to have enough glue on your paper and or um, varnish whatever and on your paintbrush it's gonna help make it slide and you're not going to rip anything apart and be very gentle with it okay you don't need to press it down so smooth brush working your way from the center to the outside and yes you will have some wrinkles but that's the charm of it and once you get used to it you will have less and less wrinkles you can hold your paper like this a little bit let me show you here I, sh I keep it a little bit high like this and I am avoiding as much as possible the bubbles and the paper. I'm really being very nice, very gentle with my paper here. And it's so easy to do. It's so also it's quite fast. When you do this kind of thing, I would recommend doing all your painting first. Paint all your white, then all your black. Whoops. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bad idea. And then doing all your collage because it's going to go very fast than doing one after the other. When I do cards, I do the same thing. It's like in a um, assembly line, you know. So now I'm just making sure I'm using the light to see if there's any big wrinkles and it seems okay. So that's good. And I'm using um, Elmer's glue with water. So it's going to be, whatever glue you need, you use, just make sure that it's going to dry clear. It may look a little blurry in the beginning, but it should absolutely dry clear. Once this is done, you're going to put it aside and let it dry. And if you want to make your coaster really, really um, stay and you, being able to use it during years, you have to put at least, I would say, maybe four coats of glue or a varnish on top of it whether it's matte or shiny this is totally up to you but it's going to protect your coaster from water from stains and you need to do the same thing on the sides so concerning the sides there's two ways of doing it I usually if I do the sides I would wait for this to um, to dry and then come back or you can just stop the way it is. It's the easiest way. You stop here, then when it's dry, you're gonna come back here and I'll show you this. Cut your paper and make it nice. And then here with a paintbrush, put another color. It can be here, for example, I could use red or green or gold and do here the edges. If you wanna put the, the paper on the edges, you'll have to wait it's a better if you're not used to it to wait until it's dry and then go and do the edges and then cut them off. I usually just stop here. It's it's much easier and much quicker because it's less tear and wear when you're doing it. So I'm going to put this one aside and I'll be back as soon as it's dried and I'm going to show you how to cut it and to make it really really nice. Okay, my coaster have has dried so now I'm going to be able to cut the sides if you wanted to do the sides with the paper well that would be the moment to go because um, here it's totally dry you can't put your fingers on it you're not going to normally rip anything so you could put some glue here or varnish and put your paper then onto it you could do that right now but since I'm going to paint the sides in gold I'm not going to bother with this step so it's just easier to do it this way so what I'd like to do is put it upside down and I'm going to cut here around really close, the closest I can and I have more visibility than cutting this way. So that's going to be quite easy to do. this aside, cut well, okay now I'm just gonna make sure everything is nice from everywhere It 
it's so easy to do and if you do it in an assembly line it's going to be even quicker okay I think it's more or less done that's the moment to verify that everything is really well glued on the side I'm going to have to cut these little pieces here or make sure everything is really well cut if not you can still put some glue and stick it back on here it seems to be good so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some gold paint any brand will do this is folk art it can be anything else and I'm going to use my, the same brush because it's really it's flat and it's going to be easier to use this flat brush than using a round one because it's going to provide from spilling or going overboard so my my brush here is really at an angle totally flat here so I'm not going to put any gold paint on this side and if I do I just apparently I did I'm just using my finger or a wet cloth and do it very quickly because once acrylic paint dries it's really hard to take it away or even almost impossible so I'm doing this all around just showing you how easy it is just a tiny bit wet that's good make sure I don't have paint on my finger and the effect is going to be so nice I could have used green too, you know, green or red I just wanted to have a little bit of gold in here and if one layer is not enough just when it's totally dry don't put thick layers, it's always better when you're painting to do two layers, two thin layers than a very thick one and if your acrylic paint is thick well you will only need one coat of it I usually like to use thick acrylic but you don't have to buy something really uh, expensive to do this cheap paint will do good but I have more professional acrylics and I, I like to use them because it can be a little bit more expensive but it's the colors maybe are more vibrant and um, also it saved me some time doing one coat instead of two it's better this one has a quite good coverage but I'll see when it's dry if I really need to do another one or not a little bit more here and on the back side it's not too bad I might do a little a second coat of black but I like it this way and when this is dry that would be also the good moment when it's dry or maybe even now if you can put it here on a non-stick table is to use your foam pieces here so you can use E6000 for this this kind of glue I'm just going to use my uh, hot glue gun because it works really well on foam and on wood so I'm just going to look at the side that is better and I'm going to put some glue here don't go too far stay more in the middle because it's going to seep out otherwise and I am just putting it right here trying to center it a little bit and then stop moving it and it's going to dry very quickly that's what I love my hot glue gun and you should not do that but that's it it still needs um, let's say three more coats of, um, you could use Mod Podge, Glossy Mod Podge now over this or you could have used your Mod Podge before using this it's totally fine but you need several coats to protect it and also when you're gonna put your coats you're gonna avoid all these um, maybe the brush strokes that, that you can see here I, I don't know if you can see them but there are some brush strokes after the second or third layer the brush, the, the brush strokes are gonna disappear and it's gonna be nicer and smoother let me show you the previous one I have already done you might see this I don't know if it's the best one I've, I've done but this is really old I'm sorry for the glare but I just want to show you that there are almost no brush strokes 
and I will maybe have to put another one so long ago but look you can keep these for so long I, I think it's really economical and it's a nice gift to give somebody so I hope this video was useful and helpful for you please give me some thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe and share sharing is caring thank you very much and see you soon bye bye